What happens when you take the six most common food scraps and bury them underneath the exact same tomato grown in the exact same conditions for the exact same amount of time? That's exactly what we did in this video. Burying food scraps directly into the garden to boost soil fertility is one of the most time-honored and classic techniques, but are all food scraps created equally? And is the way you bury them the same? That's what we wanted to find out in this video. So that's what we did. And I have to say, as a gardener for over 10, 12 years now, the results of this experiment truly shocked me. So to explain how we got to this point, we have to rewind the clock about three months. In front of me, I have the six most common things people recommend to bury in the garden underneath your plants to boost their growth. So over here in slot number one, I have an old sourdough starter. I have some tahini pasta, old, really sort of sloppy looking pot of beans. So this is my kitchen leftovers. Here in this bucket, I've just got some garden scraps that I've collected from around the garden. So next, Let's open this up. I've got catfish heads. Look at those guys right there. Next, I have just food scraps. This is something like, you know, little bits of cabbage that you didn't use, etc. So like a piece of an apple. Finally, I have farm fresh eggs. These actually came from my hens here at the garden. And our final ingredient is nothing over here. We are going to do a control where we bury nothing at all and just see what the natural soil will provide the tomato. So what we're gonna do is bury all these about 12 inches deep and put a tomato on top, but we need this experiment to be as perfect as a backyard garden experiment can be. So here is what we did, starting with the tomatoes. We chose to grow Italian Roma tomatoes from Botanical Interests, our seed company, and we grew six of them. We started them in our Epic Four Cell trays with the same soil at the same time with the exact same growing conditions. So these are as close to identical as they can be almost the exact same height. Some are throwing flowers out. This one might be a little bit more stunted, but hey, it's a backyard experiment. We're doing the best we can here. So the tomatoes are controlled. The next thing we had to figure out was how to control the soil. So what we did here is we broad forked it. We took a big giant metal fork, stuck it in the ground and kind of loosened the soil up all down this row. We added no fertilizer whatsoever. And then these bamboo stakes represent where the tomatoes are going to be. We spaced them about two feet apart. Normally a tomato, you might get 12 to 18 inches apart. We wanted them just a bit further. So what we bury in each hole won't interfere with the next tomato. We also need to control the water. So hand watering was immediately off the table. What we had to do was set up drip tape, two of them, one six inches off on this side, one six inches off on this side coming from a main line that is controlled by a timer that is going to water one hour twice a week. You might think that's overkill. And to be honest, it kind of is, but this is the fun of Epic Gardening. We needed one more control though, because gophers will go crazy for all the stuff we're about to bury in the garden. So what I have here is a steel mesh basket. And what we're gonna do when we dig our holes is put this in bury the scraps in and then put soil and then the plants on top. Why? Because if I'm a gopher, I cannot get through this and that is what would ruin this experiment. Let's do our first test fit. It seems pretty good to me. In go sloppy beans, tahini pasta. Here we go. <laughs> this is a creature. I think we'll name this one tahini after the tahini pasta. We'll see how it does. Typically you can prune some of these leaves off and bury it pretty deep, but we don't have a whole lot of depth to work with. So I'm actually just gonna leave it like this and plant it right to this leaf right here. In we go. And I'm gonna put my bamboo stake right next to it to function as an early trellis, but we do have a plan for that as well. This is our standard garden clippings, weeds, that sort of stuff, just whatever's around the garden. Healthy, nice amount of them. Not too much, because I don't want it to go anaerobic and kind of form this mat. I'm gonna call this tomato that goes in oxalis after the common weed that it is growing above. We're going in with by far the stinkiest addition, these catfish heads and fillets. So we're gonna call this tomato noodle after that weird method of catching big catfish. I've never tried it. If you have, take me on a trip. I'd love to actually do it, but let's get this one in the ground. And we go with the standard kitchen scraps. And by this, I don't mean fully prepared meals like our tahini over there. What I mean is the leftovers of fully prepared meals. So we've got some pepper stuff in here. There's some cabbage, there's little apple cores, some coffee grounds and stuff like that. Why don't we call this one scrappy, I guess? This one, we're gonna do eggs. I'm gonna put this one in whole, just to see, just to see if it lasts, if it goes the distance 
The rest of these, however, I am going to crack and just kind of toss in the bottom. We'll call this one Egbert. In you go, Egbert. Enjoy that yolk. Well, we are at our last tomato, the easiest one to put in. Call this one Roma because it's nice and pure. It's gonna go straight in the ground here, no adulteration whatsoever. Now we need to water these bad boys in. And this is maybe the only manual thing I'm going to do at all in this process. So I'm gonna to try to get as even as possible. Our tomatoes are in, they've gotten the exact same amount of water. Let me know which one you think is gonna win. The next time you see these are gonna be a little bit bigger. They're gonna have their names and they're gonna have their cages. It's been about two and a half weeks since the great tomato experiment began. I'm seeing some things I like. I'm seeing some things I don't like. So let's start off with the ones that seem to be doing pretty much the same. Tahini, which is our kitchen leftovers with the pasta buried underneath. We have oxalis, which is our garden scraps one. And then we have scrappy, which of course is our kitchen scraps. All three of these look basically the same. In fact, when I come over here, I see similar bushiness. I see similar height on the plant. And I also see some young flowers developing, but definitely no fruit. Then I get over in the middle and I have to admit, this one does surprise me. This is noodle. This is our catfish head tomato that honestly is way behind. I'm a little surprised by this. My only hypothesis right now is that it's taking a while for those heads to break down and convert into something usable. Maybe it's getting a little acidic, maybe a little anaerobic down there. And that's why we're seeing some stunted growth. We're just not seeing as much side shoot growth bushing this plant out, but we are still seeing a little bit of flowers forming. But then in a twist, we have Egbert right here with a few eggs buried underneath as well as one uncracked egg. And then Roma, just the standard Roma tomato, nothing at all added to the soil. These basically look like they're at the exact same point of growth, a lot more bushy than anything over here. Still no actual fruit, just some flower clusters, but overall more bushiness on a plant, especially a tomato means more potential energy to develop that plant. Every single one of those leaves is a solar cell converting energy, photosynthesizing into chlorophyll and making the processes of this plant life happen. So I'm seeing some really favorable growth on our control as well as our egg. Now, here's my thesis. These four over here have significant matter to break down, whereas these ones don't. Obviously the control has nothing to break down whatsoever. The plant's roots are just using whatever's in the soil. But here, I would suspect if you were to dig underneath, you would see absolutely no whites or yolks. That's long, long gone by now, probably already used by microbes in the soil. You probably have some eggshells down there basically doing nothing. So this almost might be closer to a control than I expected. It's been another 10 days since we have visited the Great Tomato Experiment. Funny fact, we had a hurricane here in San Diego, California at the Epic Gardening Homestead. Hurricane Hillary blasted these tomatoes with about an inch or two of rain, and I think they're doing pretty well, but there's a scientist on our team whose expert opinion I need to see what he thinks of these tomatoes. Okay, Jacques, I'm gonna put a challenge to you I'm gonna tell you what I've buried, but okay. not where I've buried them. So number one, I have just nothing. I did eggs, I did a few cracked eggs and one whole egg. Classic. I did your garden leftovers, your, your, your pasta <laughs> right. actually, yeah, yeah, right? Yeah. Your tahini pasta. I did catfish heads, garden scraps, and then classic kitchen scraps. I'd say that, so obviously this one's the smallest. Yep. Then that guy. Yep. Biggest is probably the, the last one over there. It's gotta be the one, one of these two, it. yeah. So if I had to guess, people always say, put a catfish or like a, a fish head. Or you, a hear fish it all, you hear it all the time, tomato, right? you hear it all the time. So I'd, I'd guess that that's probably in the top three. Okay. And then the eggs is another classic. I don't know if it's good or bad, but I'd say that's top three. Yeah. And then maybe the kitchen scraps and the leftovers are probably the worst. I don't know. So okay. maybe that's my pasta. Get this. I'm gonna go in this in order, okay? Okay. okay. This is your pasta. Okay. Right here. That's decent. This is just standard weeds from the garden. Looks good. This is the catfish. Oh wow, okay, so that's the worst. Easily the worst. Yeah. This is kitchen scraps from Cook It. Eggs and nothing. Wow. So give me your PhD geology <laughs> candidate expertise. Why do you think this is happening? My only guess would be that whatever these, like the catfish head and maybe my pasta, yeah. are just super anaerobic. Like they're just I think not they're, they're complex alive. foods. They're complex. Yeah. They're anaerobic. And there's also something really important that we don't talk about a lot here on the channel that you understand this, you will understand nutrients at a much higher level. And that is particle size and surface area. Oh yeah. Think about it. We put three fish heads in this hole. hole whole fish heads, Got it. the only way bacteria, microbes, et cetera, they have to get around that exterior layer of the fish head. 
break that down. There's maybe even less surface area at that point. Break that down, break that down. Whereas if you put in the scraps, it, there's a ton of surface area. There are small particles. Right, they're already right? cut up a little bit. It's similar to composting. Down. So here, let's grab a couple of these trellises. We have to treat them equally. So what we're gonna do is, they're all determinate tomatoes, but we are going to replace the trellis with a taller one. We're not pruning them whatsoever. We're gonna let them sprawl, but I do want that main vine to come up. So let's tie these babies so up. So we're just gonna put a stake and then wrap some string around it? Wrap some string, yeah, all that's right. it. Let us know your predictions in the comments. We'll be back with another update in a second. Back again, mid-September now, Jacques. A lot has changed. We have fruit on nearly every one of our experiments. Yep. But still, it's actually kind of hard to see what's going on now. They're starting to grow <laughs> into one another, but I think your leftovers, your pasta dish, really seems to be the loser now. It does seem like the smallest overall plant. Yeah. So I would say that you're probably right. Smallest overall. <laughs> then weirdly, the garden weed one has started to come back. Oxalis, this and one is, has really done nicely. Looks really healthy. And then what I'm noticing, and remember we noticed last time that the, the fish one, noodle, yeah. this one had a smaller overall canopy of tissue, but it had actual fruit on it. That's right. And it looks like that has continued because you've got a nice amount of fruit on this one down here. And a lot of flowers on the way still. So yeah. it might not be the biggest, but it's going to yield for pa sure. Part of me thinks maybe it's because the nutrient profile of the catfish is higher in like phosphorus or potassium maybe. I totally. don't know. Makes uh, sense. And then over here, it's sort of a mess. Like the control and the egg one are kind of just one plant at this point. Yeah, <laughs> I would say the biggest difference that I could see is that the control seems to have the most amount of aphids. Yeah, this one is covered in these sort of whitish aphids. There's a little bit on every one, but Honestly, the weeds has zero aphids. That's very bizarre. Zero aphids. That's very bizarre. Makes me feel like maybe there's some sort of beneficial that was in the weeds that is somehow being transferred through. I don't know. We'll see. There are a couple ripe tomatoes. Not gonna pick them because at the end of the video, not only are we gonna show you what everything looks like underneath the soil, but we're also gonna pick every single tomato, count them and weigh them per plant to try and settle this food scrap question once and for all. The time has come, my friends. The season is coming to a close, Jacques. It certainly looks like it's come to a close here. <laughs> They're looking bad, honestly. <laughs> so what we need to do is we'll take all the tomatoes, put them in front of each variety, take all the green tomato tissue, put it behind. Okay. Because I'm also curious how much green versus mm, how much actual produce like was grown. potential. Yeah, exactly. So let's go ahead and do that. All right. Well, Jacques, we have a pretty damn impressive display of tomatoes, oh, if yeah. I do say so myself. So what we've done is we've gone through the arduous process of already pre-counting these, both separating into ripe and unripe. And for ripe, we just decided anything like 50% color or more, that's basically ripe. Yeah, the flavor's good at that point. Now, what we have to do is weigh each of these because we might know that there's, let's say, 100 right here, but if they're all an ounce, well, that 100 <laughs> count isn't so impressive. So we're going to give you the total weight and the average weight, and when we're done, we are finally going to dig up what's underneath each of these and see what's there. Five pounds and 12.7 ounces. Six pounds and five ounces. Two pounds, 13.4 ounces. Five pounds, 11.1 .1 ounces. Eight pounds, 7.9 ounces. Seven pounds, 14.8 ounces. Jack and I have conferred. We've weighed, we've gotten the average weight, we've gotten the percentage of ripe and unripe, and we've come to some very serious conclusions. Jacques, what's the first one on your mind? The first one is that there's an obvious loser. There is an obvious <laughs> loser. Let's go to our loser now. Our loser is Noodle, the catfish head. Here's my theory, you tell me what you think. Very complex piece of organic matter. Big oh, yeah. old heads of catfish buried right at the root zone, hard to break down. Thus, it did not break down very well. It didn't convert into nutrients that the plant could use quick enough. This is absolutely the worst only about 80 and they're about half the weight of any other one. Super tiny. Then you have the middle of the pack, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. The middle of the pack being Jacques kitchen leftovers, <laughs> my weed scraps, and then standard kitchen scraps like trimmings of vegetables and stuff like that. All of these were roughly the same. Within the, margin of error, basically. Yeah, they're basically the same. The only call out, Jacques, is that this one, just the garden weeds, by far had the most <laughs> yeah. green growth. The only thing I can think of here is that perhaps it's a lot of vegetative material. Perhaps the nitrogen was made available quickly and it could utilize that and turn that into vegetative. Which is exactly grow. how you would make like a weed fertilizer stew. That's it would exactly be what you would nitrogen, think. nitrogen and that seems to be true. It seems to be the case. Now we go into the <laughs> ones that we didn't think would win, but it seems like they have. First off, you have Egbert. This is the one with a couple cracked eggs and one whole egg. And we're going to show you in a second if that whole egg is still there. Ooh. I think it is. Do you? I think it's gone. You think it's gone? Yeah, I think it's gone. Okay, we'll have to see. But what we noticed here, is that the counts on these are roughly similar, 120, 134. 
They're generally bigger and they're generally a little more ripe, but the pure control- Ripeness. Absolutely destroyed the competition as <laughs> yeah. far as ripeness. There's about 70 or so ripe ones here, and none of the other tomatoes at all are, have over 30 ripe tomatoes. So I don't know exactly why this happens, but I think you might. The most interesting thing to me, I don't know the exact reasoning, but this had a very small amount of vegetative growth, which also meant that it was the most densely producing tomato. Yes. So that's actually a nice little bonus. When you think about this one at 134 tomatoes and very over 50% ripe, right? And then you think about the weed scraps one over <laughs> yeah. there with just under 100 tomatoes, way Twice more vegetative size. growth and less ripe. So what do I think is happening at a broad scale? The takeaway to bring home, if you want my opinion, it would be probably I wouldn't bother putting food scraps in the garden. Compost is what food scraps become. And that's what you put in because it's the most bioavailable. But I would say, Jacques, that the surface area really matters. Absolutely. That's the key because the bigger stuff is just gonna take a long time to break down. The chopped up weeds clearly did okay. I would guarantee the weeds are completely gone. Yeah. I would think that the kitchen scraps are completely gone, but let's find out. We have to go dig this up. I really wanna know. Let's start out with your kitchen leftovers. Ooh, we got that basket. Look at that. I don't see a single thing. I don't thing. see a single thing in there. It's completely gone. That's completely gone. Honestly surprising. Not only that, it looks like it never was here. Like <laughs> yeah, nothing. No evidence. No evidence whatsoever. Wow. Very interesting. Kitchen leftovers completely eradicated. Okay, there's a basket. I'd be shocked if there was a single <laughs> weed. I would 100% yeah. be shocked. There's nothing. Nothing. It's nothing. just dirt. Nothing. Cool. All right, let's check out the middle of the pack here. We'll skip noodle for a second, and we'll go over to just kitchen scraps. Another prediction here, nothing. Oh. Look at the worms. Oh wait, there is stuff. There is there's stuff. tons of eggshells. Oh wow, this is fascinating. Tons of life. This is fascinating. There are tons of eggshells. Wow. And there is a absolutely teeming with pill bugs. And absolutely the other teeming. two, like zero, basically. There is no signs of actual bug life that we could see visually. There's a ton of pill bugs in here. And in fact, there's an oh. avocado peel. <laughs> Look at that. There's the pits. Wow. So what's interesting Very here, Jacques, cool. is you're seeing the decomposer layer. You're seeing the worms and the pill bugs. And I would guarantee there's a couple other things we They're doing work. can't see here. They have decomposed, I would say, most of this. The only things left, and this might be, be a clue to the next one. I know, that's what I was the thinking. Are the eggshells? I know. You know. I'm like, oh, maybe okay. no eggs. Okay. Last time, chance to change your mind. You think there's going to be an uh, egg? Ooh. Uh oh, I see something oh. here. What do we got? A whole lot of eggshells. Tons of eggshells. And some life. There's definitely something. Hold on. Where's the egg? I think it did break. You think so? I'm shocked that the egg broke. I'm it, actually shocked. I wonder, what if we just stabbed it with the steak? We might have, yeah, <laughs> we might have. It's mostly broken down. It's, mostly it's broken pretty down, thin. But it's very fragile. Very it's fragile. Very fragile. So, might need a... so here's my prediction, Jacques. I think we're gonna see it be skeletonized. Yeah. I don't think we're gonna see a lot of actual... I think we're gonna see a lot of life here. Yeah, I we're think We're gonna see so. a lot of little creepy crawlers. Yeah. I'm a little scared. <laughs> a little bit scared. I'm a little scared, honestly. Smell? Yeah, how's it smell? I don't smell anything. Yep. Which I like. Oh, there's some worms up in here. Whoa, look how chunky. Oh, Whoa. dude. Whoa. That's bone. That's Whoa. Oh. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's completely. <laughs> dude. Dude, it's completely gone. Look at these bones. It's all bones. This is all bones. Like, there's no material left. And there's a ton of worm life around here. Ton of worm life. Doesn't smell like anything. Let me see. <clears throat> like, absolutely nothing. It smells like. B like pure, yeah, soil? just like a, I don't know, nothing. <laughs> wow, dude, not, not only that, that much life. Not, not that much life, but the, but the material is the proteins and the fats, they are completely gone. Wow. Completely gone. So I wonder what happened then to the plant? Well, here's what I think. The process of breaking those bones, that protein and fats down, basically stalled up. the plant's ability to intake nutrients. Because think about it, it's not breaking down protein and fat directly into nitrogen, et cetera. There's process to that. Absolutely. So it's there, there's a probably a microbial environment going on that is basically inhibiting nutrients until it flushes them at the Absolutely. end. Absolutely. You know? And I think it probably went like anoxic, like no oxygen. No oxygen. Because it was just so gross. And yeah. look at the roots actually. Yeah. On this, yeah. comparatively. Yeah. Are pretty small. They're pretty small. Like they're pretty Like look at thin. the roots on this. This was our weed one. This one is very healthy looking yeah, roots. much thicker even, roots. Even this one's healthy. Yeah. Yeah, I wow. Because think about it, you, you transplant the tomato directly into the fish head and they're starting to break down immediately. Exactly. It's probably going a little acidic or, or anoxic or something like that. Definitely so, funky. What have you learned, Jacques, <laughs> at the end? If you, it, what would you recommend? I would recommend using compost. I might try an egg just because it was close enough that 
I'm a little bit curious. Yeah. But I, definitely not. To me, noticeable. I think I think I honestly, and I've said it a million times, I would just plant and I might add a little bit of compost and I wouldn't do any of these crazy wild things I, I, <laughs> yeah. I would just i would just garden as as mother nature sort of wanted now us to garden to in the first place deal with catfish well either. think about why fertilizer exists basically it's gone through the process for you it's, yeah it's very fine very granular broken down very close to its final component, AKA the elements that the plant is taking up. So we hope you enjoyed this experiment. We had a ton of fun doing it. If you wanna see more stuff like this, definitely hit us with a subscribe. Full tomato guide here. You can buy seeds to grow tomatoes from our seed company, Botanical Interests. Good luck in the garden and keep on decomposing. <laughs>